thousands of gallons of crude oil are oozing into the Louisiana Make no Coastal mistake. Water. We will do whatever's necessary. But whatever's in fact, necessary. this is a crisis. Yes, I'm just a commercial fisherman. Oh, my whole Gulf life Coast. is based on this. Have we brought in the best and the brightest of all the minds that could deal with this? Team PPR, which is short for Pacific Petroleum Recovery. We're not a long-standing company. It was really at the start of the Deepwater Horizon. Um, Kevin and I were talking one day, and he said there's going to be the need for a high-capacity system, and I have just the uh, just the idea. What I was trying to do was get that forward float. To just I'm the hands-on guy, the mechanic, if you will, that kind of designed the system. It was actually designed on a bar napkin having a beer after doing an oil spill exercise. There's nothing on the face of the planet right now that works in anything over a one foot sea, period. We fish in eight foot seas. We fish in 25 and 30 foot seas with trawl nets. The only difference is that I happen to be catching something that's not swimming away. It's an adaptation of a fishing net and there are a lot of people in the Pacific Coast that fish, so they pull these nets all the time. It's going to be sticking out of the water about 12 inches and underwater about 12 inches. And the oil floating on the top as we begin to pull, the oil will all be pushed to the back. And then we put our suction line in there and suck the oil off the back of it. The next part of the system is once you've collected the oil is how you get it out of the water. And again, we employed some pump technology that's primarily used in the fish business. And it's a, uh, it's a, what's called a dual stage vacuum pump. Uh, at the time, I didn't even know you pumped fish. And now I probably pump more fish than anybody in the world. We discovered that our fish pumps were very effective for moving thick, oily material after a spill when it's clogged with ducks and seals and seaweed and floating debris. Uh, we pump pickles in one case. How about a bowling ball? Yes. So you put a bowling ball in there, bowling ball go right through it. Bowling ball, exactly. Pumpkins, cabbage heads. Repeat after me, repeat after me. Fish sucking, pickle pumping, oil slurping machine. That's it. For sure. Fish sucking. Pickle pumping. My family's been here with me. Kevin Kennedy is my stepfather, and Susan is here. She's my mother. My brother is here. His name's Matthew. And then my husband is here as well, Josh. Team PPR. Family affair. <laughs> we know each other's communication styles and have obviously lived around each other for a long period of time. It's been a fun family event. We are from Alaska. I was born in Homer. Um, I was a child when Exxon happened and I remember um, it was a huge impact in my life to see the oil spill. And so it's really cool to be a part of this and see how it can potentially change industry. I think we're kind of the, the dark horse in this competition. Six out of the other competitors are the who's who that makes oil spill response equipment in the world. And some of these guys have $100 million a year companies. I've had a lot of junk pieces of shit from Home Depot and crap like that. We don't have a lot of money. But we've done it on a wing and a prayer. He's coming back. By the time we loaded up the container and sent it out, um, I think I had $123 in my bank account. I've done so much for so long with so little that I can do almost anything with nothing if given some time. <laughs> it's a hodgepodge of pieces, but uh, it'll do the job. All right, you ready? You wanna start? Yeah. Now? Yeah. The oil in the net, that was incredible. The way it gathered the oil, I mean, he's been telling them this is what it's gonna do. That was awesome. Pressure began to build up and we were looking to see what was going on. If we would've had a pressure gauge, I would've, I would've shut it off.
apparently someone had not opened the discharge valve. They didn't know, they didn't. They didn't know the valve to close. Oh, is that what the problem is? Yeah. Valve. Those valves down there for the supply to give them into the tanks, they're closed. We were pumping against uh, closed 10 inch valves and something had to give. So we've got a vacuum leaf here, which we're suspecting is the exit door. When we blowed it, 30 pounds of water went gushing everywhere, that door probably... Well, I bet it kicked closed like a son of a Could ripped it or bend it. Basically, it stretched out enough that it, well, it doesn't seal to... anymore. Oh, okay. The door needs to be right or your pump doesn't work well. You can see the bubbling around the rubber holes and see how they're wallowed out. We need to get a new door here. We damaged the two of the flap doors, so we had air, eight of them air freighted in. Four doors coming by Alaskan Air to the airport, and four there. coming by FedEx when somebody f***s up. We really couldn't afford to have a delay if they didn't get them here. One or the other would arrive. Okay. We went to the Alaska Air Counter, and it wasn't there. What the deal is? What? How are you guys? Yeah, what, what's the... Uh, Heather's been at Air Cargo for the last however long. They haven't been able to find it there. Air, so Alaska FedEx Airlines has lost it. But they, they might actually find it, you never know. The second shipper was FedEx. Promised it would be here on site at 10.30 this morning. Um, at 10.27, the driver pulled up and it wasn't our parts. They cannot find our parts. So our parts have been lost by two shippers. We have a limited amount of time to get in the test runs we have to get in. Right. So the last run would have to start before that eight hour mark. It's not a test of our system at this point, it's a test of our, our character, our metal. Are we going to twist off and go nuts or are we going to maintain our Alaskan sense of humor and just roll with it, you know? <laughs> I told Kevin, I said, well, you're going to show them what you're made of. We've been through so much. You just, you, you know, just once in this next couple of days, just let it go smooth. We don't quit. I mean, in, in Alaska, you can't quit. You quit, you die. Your car breaks down in the middle of the Alcan. You don't sit there and cry about it and wait for the bears to come eat you. You, you try to figure out what's wrong with it, you fix it, and you keep going. All right. All right. We got them here. Brand new. Careful, don't pucker it up. Okay. <laughs> See how nice and tight that is. We only got two hours. I know. But... Ready to go. What has it been? Maybe a couple days? One thing after another. It is what it is, and just keep going best you can. <laughs> keep my fingers crossed on that bad boy. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. I mean, it pulled it perfectly, I thought. I was impressed, even myself, and that's tough to do. <laughs> the number I got on my last optimization run last night was 96.5% oil to water ratio, which is pretty phenomenal for a system that uses no mechanical means to separate water. It's a long, long climb to go against the naysayers and just keep plowing forward. People are watching. All of industry's got their eyes on it, and maybe someone will see what I'm doing and start to listen. I could be in 40-foot seas, and it will work. That's what it's designed to do. They're gonna have to look at what we've done, and they're gonna have to say, this is very different, but it works.